Hey friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and today we are wet felting Christmas stockings. So if this looks like a project you've been wanting to try, you can make them any color you want. You can customize them for all the members of your family and it actually is super easy once you have some basic wet felting experience. This one is designed for needle felting on a winter scene. So hey, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video and we're going to jump right into this project. I have here for fibers, we're going to be doing a base layer of our merino cross batting, which is a 25 micron. I'm going to use a little bit of that on the cuff. And then I have a collection of merino short fiber bats for the top layer. You can use any fiber that you like to wet felt with, merino top, uh, MC1, short fiber bats, New Zealand Corydale, whatever you like to work with. We have some warm water, not too hot, not cold, olive oil soap, a measuring tape, or other ruler, a ball brass, and a sponge, whatever you like to wet out with. A rolling device, you can use a pool noodle or an agitator. We're going to start with a pool noodle. We'll finish with a, the wooden Nikki and Nikki agitator. We have our resist. This is what we're going to be felting over to make our stocking. We have a few towels. I have our mesh which is a barrier allows us to wet out the fiber, some plastic sheeting, some bubble wrap, and then a non-slip grip mat for underneath my workstation. And that is all we need to get started, so let's jump right in. I'm starting with a base layer of our MC1 batting. It's a slightly higher micron than the short fiber merino bats. It's also got a real nice crimp to it. It's just gonna give me a little more loft to my stocking and help make it a little more stiff. Um, I'm probably not gonna use all the fibers I brought. I weighed in four ounces. I'm sure I'm gonna use much less than that, uh, but I'm starting with the two ounces of the MC1 cotton. So this is two ounces of MC1 cotton and I'm only going to take the wool up to the white up to here because this part is going to be a dark charcoal gray. So this fiber you can just tear. And then we're going to piece it on. I don't really need the plastic yet. Get that out of the way. Okay. Just use your hands to hold your fiber down. The first layer is going to wrap all the way around and the next layer is just going to sit right on top. So this one we can trim a little more exact. For the cuff, which rolls down, I want the merino short fiber to be on the outside and the MC1 to be on the inside, so it's going to be just the opposite. So in this case, the merino short fiber is the one that is going to be the first layer, and that's this nice, really lightweight, beautiful stuff. And I'm just going to get it close. This bat, you can kind of see the grain is running this way, that's totally fine. So 
So here we go. Side two, side one. Now for the top layer, I'm going to be doing the merino short fiber bats in white and light blue and light gray so I can create kind of a winter scene I want a needle felt onto after. But the hidden layer at the cuff will be the MC1 charcoal so that the two um, layers are similar. Each both has MC1 batting and the merino short fiber in the mix. the first layers of my wool all staged. We'll do the design layer last. The first thing we're going to do is encase our resist in a full layer of wool and that means we wet and soap it. So let's do that since we have the fibers all prepped. I like to wet by pressing the water through. If I have a really thin Nuno felt project, I may not use my sponge. I might just use the ball brass. But this MC1 batting is kind of lofty and springy and has very little lanolin left in it. So adding plenty of soap and water, allowing enough water to pass through really helps. And I like to use the sponge because it helps me press water and soap in and air out. And it really feels like it allows me to apply just the right amount of water, not too much. I'm loading my sponge with water every time. Just going to press no rubbing. Now we're going to fold everything back up over onto the resist. You can use the plastic if you want. Just hold the fiber down and peel it back. Just fold it nice and snug.
this one on top. I'm not pressing too hard on this side because I don't want to smash the wool on the other side off. We will work out all of that air. This line right here is not really going to show because the cuff is supposed to fold down. Now resist the urge to really rub because, uh, I mean, this is, I'm just kind of smoothing, but re resist the urge to start felting because we need to put our design layer on. other fibers that are sticking over on this side we want to pull back over to this side. Now it's time for our design layer. If you want to just keep this same theme running all the way through, you can see the value of starting uh, any color bands and making them complete all the way through so that you don't have fiber migration of one color through the other. That's why we're doing gray on gray and then the white underneath the light gray and the light blue and white because we won't mind if that migrates through and just softens those colors a little bit. I don't expect a lot of migration so have fun with the design layer. We're going to just do uh, one solid layer um, and again, we're going to be doing these winter, wintry colors because I'm hoping to need to felt the scene onto it when I get all finished.
So no, we're just gently pressing right now. We're not pressing super, super hard. Um, what's important about that is, again, the MC1 is really lofty. And if you press so hard, you're just gonna smush everything off the resist. We want everything to hug the resist as closely as possible. So until we kind of get a little shrinkage uh, to get it back hugging the resist, we wanna just minimize the pressure that we use. But before we flip it over, we can do a little tiny bit of gentle agitation. And notice that while you're pressing, you feel for any thin spots. Mine feels pretty uniform. The MC1 adds quite a bit of loft. Peel back your mesh. Make sure that you have everything where you want it, because this is our design layer. And this is about as gentle as I wanted it to look, just kind of misty and sweet. Got a little piece of orange in there, probably from my mesh. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it over and do side two. On this side, only put as much wool as you need. If you can, avoid going back over to the other side. That's ideal. So just piece in as much as you need on this side.
Once you have all of your fibers exactly how you want them, then it's time to start agitation. So we're going to be creating a soft felt or pre-felt. And so our agitation starts very gradual with a very light hand. We're just going to be gliding across the wool and coaxing it towards the template and to create a surface skin. Get your hands soapy and you can put your mesh so it just kind of tucks under the resist. We wrapped any loose fibers back over onto the top and we're going to do a real even gliding, 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 gliding towards the center, towards the center. The fibers should not be disturbed under your touch and they should not be peeling through the mesh. Gently work your way around the entire side and along the edges with a real gentle pressure. This can take a little bit of time, especially if your project's a little bit thicker. So just be patient and don't try and rush it. There's a lot of water in the project right now and later we're going to be taking some of that out. Occasionally just pause and peel back your mesh and make sure nothing is sticking. Now if you wanted to add some kind of embellishment fibers, um, like, you know, Tessa Silk or anything like that, do it before you start the agitation. I'm not going to put any of that in mine. We're going to start gentle rolling. Expect that when you start to roll for the first time that water is going to come out. So just be prepared. You can even drain it when you do your initial roll. Just drain it right back into your bucket and make sure that your pool noodle is long enough uh, for your entire stocking. Roll up the bubble plastic and real gentle, gentle roll. We're going to roll this direction first. Now you can, um, you might like a rolling towel. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna take a little bit of this water out. Just let it drain. 
Just let it drain into your bucket, but don't try and squeeze it all out. You, need, you still need water in there, but just let it drain out naturally. We're not going to squeeze too hard at first. We're just more about getting that forwards and backwards action, get it hugging close to the resist. This is my rolling towel. looks loose, but don't worry about it. The, the plastic is what matters. So we're just going to do forwards and backwards 25 times and then give it a quarter turn. I'll show you. Quarter turn. Do this a hundred till you get to a hundred. Now we're going to roll from the opposite side. You can just flip the whole thing over. That's fine.
I just want to see how everything feels. So I I'm going to take off my plastic, maybe let a little more water escape, and I'm going to massage. It feels like it's really starting to hug the resist, which is awesome. And I'm rubbing pretty well right now, and it's not, the fiber is not sticking to the mesh, which means it's forming that surface skin and binding it to itself, which is exactly what we want. We have more rolling to do, but hand agitation or using a palm washboard or anything like that um, can be done now as well. Whatever you're comfortable using, and if you're not, if you're not sure, then just take it slow and make sure you're not disturbing your fibers. You're not squishing them off the resist. They should be hugging tightly. We're going to roll more now without the plastic. And just repeat your hundreds from all four edges, including we'll do top down also. Now in this stage of rolling, you should feel that your project feels like you can roll it tighter and you can also roll a little more quickly and with a little more strength. So this is my normal speed right now and I am pressing into the fiber a little bit. Hands on one side, bubbles on the other. I'm going to roll it without the pull noodle. So. This is an opportunity for the fibers to really get nice and close together. Just roll it up and I'm being gentle. I'm not being too hard. There's no core in the middle, as I said, so there's no pool noodle. There's no anything. And this is going to get us to where I got to without you here. And that took me about an hour um, working with the batting. The layout goes really, really fast. Um, so that's where we are right now and my stocking is kind of cold and a little bit wet and what I'm going to do is spend these next few minutes pulling this project with you and getting it to really um, shrink down. So here, here we are and I brought a bowl um, so I'm just going to get a little bit of my cold water out and I'm gonna put in some hot water. Now it's been sitting here the entire show, um, so it's not super hot, but that's okay. It's warmer than what's already in the stocking. And Anne's gonna read me your questions at this point because now I'm, I'm blind to any questions that you have. Shanna says, I love the colors. April says, I can't wait to make me some stockings. <laughs> 
Oh, Shayla says, I can almost smell that wet wool and ah. soap. I can't wait to go home and make it. <laughs> it's an acquired taste, right? Some people don't love it. Some people don't love it. Now, um, if you're if you're too aggressive on your project, uh, I'm going to blot some of this. This water is cold. Anything that's been sitting down, uh, that's the water will kind of sink, you know, to side two, and so it's wetter under there and colder. So just keep that in mind. You can also I would just plunge this, you know, into a hot hot bucket. You know, there's no no reason not to. Um, okay, I'm going to roll this up by itself, just like we did in the video take off my glasses since I can't see anybody anyway and Anne's gonna tell me tell me your questions so what we have here I said in the beginning of the video is we have a we have a soft felt and what we want to do is fold this project and full it is to further shrink it and get those fibers really close together you want to get it to where you start to see it buckling on the resist when the fibers start to shrink smaller than the resist that's when you know it's time to take it off. There's no real fast way to wet felt. You're making fabric with your bare hands and this just isn't for everybody. But for some people, you know, it's really a satisfying thing to see what you can do with your bare hands. So I'm gonna felt this just a little bit by itself and I wanna tell you that it's absolutely shrinking up on the resist and if you have our super bubble you can roll on the super bubble as well you can fold it on itself I'm gonna shrink get some of this water out of here and Claire asks is there a reason you've chosen not to felt a hanger on the stocking uh yeah I just didn't even really think about it actually <laughs> it didn't even occur to me I probably sew it on after uh, so that I know where it is. I didn't really plan it in the design because I'm going to fold this down, but I'd probably stitch it on after. Um, otherwise, you'd want to felt it. Because my cuff is going to be inside, you'd have to felt it on the inside. And I was trying to do what we could do today. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. Okay, can you see this buckling happening here? Let's. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see it a little more closely. Can you see how this is all kind of buckling up? This is getting smaller than the resist. And when you hear people talk about the pinch test, there's two ways to think about the pinch test. If you pinch it and the fibers want to pull off, not ready to remove. But also you should be able to pinch it and it feels like a solid piece of fabric. It feels like it would, it tense up like this and would stay there. And that's when you know that you're safe to remove it from the resist. So we're going to get some blazing hot water and I'm going to felt this thing. I'm going to fold this thing down. And would you go to the super bubble too? And, and so what I'm going to do is take this off the resist. So let me get a little bit wider again. Um, we're going to take this off the resist, and all you got to do is pull it out. We're probably going to go over just a little bit, y'all. Um, but what I'd like to do is uh, maybe needle felt the design on this with you next week. If I can get myself to save it and not felt it. I'm going to squeeze all this cold water out. I am going to heat this up. If you're not sure if your piece is done, you can always let it sit overnight. Um, you can also rinse the water out. It's always really telling to see a piece the next day and you can tell whether it has, whether it's felted. When you do this between your fingers, it should feel like one layer and not two layers shifting. It should feel like a solid piece of fabric. You can turn it inside out, but you don't even have to. And here is the, the basic design that was planned for today, and that was to have all merino short fiber on the outside, but to have equal layers of MC1 and merino short fiber in the design. Um, so that worked out nicely because the top tends to always flute out when you leave the resist open, and I fluted it out a little bit because I didn't want it to bind on my stocking when I folded it over. So I'm gonna continue fulling this a little bit. Although, I'm telling you, it's fully felted. It's plenty felted. Anne has brought me some blazing hot water here and our super bubble, which, you know, you don't need, but um, some people like the super bubble, and also we have, um, 
just rolling on off the table here. I have 8,000 feet of it. <laughs> um, Super Bubble is kind of like a modern day version of the glass washboard, which I do have. Uh, but what we're gonna do is plunge this into the bucket. Oh yeah, nice hot water. Plunge it, I just like to plunge it all the way in there and get the whole thing wet. When you're done filling it, do you ever do alternating hot and cold baths? Yeah, yeah, you can do hot and cold rinses. Some people swear against it and some people swear uh, by it. It does, some people call it shocking the fibers and some people don't like to do it and some people love to do it. But what I'd like you to notice is the um, state of the fibers. You don't see a bunch of uh, puckering. The MC1 actually shrinks a little more slowly than the short fiber baths. Um, so, but they actually behave really well together. When you shock the fibers, like if you do a lot of throwing and such now, sometimes what you see is the fibers start to get that pucker and that uh, like little bubbling look to it, as opposed to if you treat it this way, you roll it and you rub it, you're going to get a little less of that puckering. So the hot and cold rinses could be the same. So look y'all, where we are is the fulling stage. We are fulling. That means we have felt, and what we want to do is get this uh, felt to be as shrunken or as felted as you want it. Slippers that you wear need to be more fulled <laughs> than something you hang on the wall. A rug needs to be more fulled than a wall hanging. And if you want to get rid of these seams, like your stocking doesn't have to fold flat and look like it has these seams, you could shape it if you want and you can get rid of all this. So if you're new and this is your first time um, felting over resist, what you should see is there's no seam here. Notice how smooth and flat that is. So even though the fibers kind of trained itself into a peak, it didn't felt to itself. And you wanna really make sure that that didn't happen. So we're in the final stages here before we rinse this out and spin it dry. I did bring my spinner, so at least we can get it a little bit dry, but ask me your questions because I know we're going over, but I do want to finish this for everybody who cares <laughs> and everyone who's going to stick with this live and everyone who's got to run, we understand that too. Is it possible to pull it too much? Um, I think it really depends on what you have. So it's possible to make a scarf too stiff. It's possible to make wrist warmers into um, armor <laughs> and you can't really like put them on. So I think the thing is to learn, you know, depending on the project that you're working with, the, you know, its purpose, um, how much do you need to full it? A stocking? Nah, you could just keep folding it till it was, you could make it stiff as a board if you want and if the fibers support that. And you can also um, shape it, you know, you can start to shape it and train it so you can stretch it where you want the toe to be more and you want the heel to go down. If you want it to shrink more here or shrink more here. Like if you want it to shrink more here, you can pinch this part. So for those who are observant, watch here that little tiny bit that we just did should produce some noticeable results. Can you see, like, it kind of swoops in and the same here. If you want this to shrink in a little bit, then this is what I just call a pinch and roll. I don't know if there's a technical name for it, but you can start to coax this fiber in and you can pull this fiber down. This is fully felted, and we can continue fulling it, though, as much as we want. But I think you need to think about the purpose of your stocking. Um, what are you going to put inside it? <laughs> if it's just a tiny stocking for candy canes, then you don't really need to keep shrinking it down. You know what I mean? Or you can make it tiny, and it won't really matter. Oh, Kim says, that's so pretty. It looks like a misty winter morning. <laughs> Yay! That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something wintry for a good little, maybe like a little winter village scene. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to drop this thing in the spinner while, right while you're standing here. I brought it with me. Um, it's going to be a little loud. So the spinner is just a little... Uh, Nina spin dryer and I can put a link uh, to it on Amazon for you if you want 
Um, but it's how I always get the water out of either stuff I felted or stuff I've dyed. And it pulls a lot of water out really quickly and does allow you um, to you know, pause and get a feel for your felt. So you don't have to hang it to dry. All that heavy water will run down and kind of stretch out your shape. Or you can toss it in your washing machine to spin out. But um, some of them don't pull as much water you know, as like this little thing does. So let us know your final questions and I'm gonna pull my thing out of the spin dryer right now. It's already ready. Um, okay, so here is our stocking, all felted. And the idea is that we, I should turn it this way since that's how you viewed it. Here we go. That is what we made. It's kind of cute and little compared, compare it to this. Um, you know, you wouldn't say it shrunk a whole, whole lot, but I think it shrunk just the right amount for what we needed. It's hard to see, you know, uh, but you've also lost whatever's the thickness of the bats here. And who really cares? All you really care about is that it looks good. So whatever you're working with, you're going to want to measure that shrinkage. And if you want to make two at a time, this is what you want to do is make your resist back to back so you can just build two at the same time and you can even make the band. This is the same way we did the wrist warmers. That is it friends. We hope this has been fun for you. We hope that you've learned something. We really look forward to your feedback. If you leave a comment down below, let us know what color you would make your Christmas stockings or any questions we can answer better. Join us, answer better. <laughs> Join us in our group, Living Felt Friends, over on Facebook. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Hit the bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video and we hope to see you in our group, Living Felt Friends.